Um, well, I mean, thank you both for your time and your wonderful shirt choices today as well. <laughs> thank you so they much. They are <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> thank, um, thank you. Before thank we you get into to this, this show is fantastic. I had such fun with it. And I love how you kind of, it almost takes you down one road and then it swings you in the other direction. So clever, combination of the writing and the performances and how it's, it's directed. What sparked wanting to do this, first of all, Charlie? Well, I was a very nerdy child. <laughs> I loved the Greek myths. And nervy? We nervy? Nerdy. Oh, nerdy. Yeah, I was, and, uh, and we've talked about the, the 1981 Clash of the Titans film, which yes. I apparently watched on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, weird. And then, and I just, I just loved the myths. I kept reading them, and I particularly started to love any reinterpretation of them. Yeah. So, things like Margaret Atwood's *The Penelope Ad*, and Caroline Duffy wrote, wrote this incredible poetry anthology called *The World's Wife*. Mm -hmm. And there was a version of Orpheus and Eurydice in that, and that was kind of yeah, the inspiration. Right. And then I had this idea, just one day, of what if Zeus had a midlife crisis? <laughs> And that was a long time ago I had that idea and it kind of kept percolating. And then I did a show called The End of the Fucking World and so I got a chance to pitch something, the next thing I wanted to do and I had always wanted to do a kind of modern retelling of the Greek gods. Did you have Jeff in mind when you had that vision of... I had someone <laughs> wearing a tracksuit. Uh, someone. Someone wearing a tracksuit. Uh, it was like, in, I think it was like in 2015, I was like, Zeus is in a tracksuit, he's running to Prometheus and they smoke a rolled up cigarette together. Yeah. I have which smoked. we did, which we shot for a, a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We shot a little oh, bit we of did, we did for shoot a second. Though. Didn't make the movie, but... It did not. But it was very good, but it didn't make it. <laughs> Within the first five minutes of the first episode, there's like five needle drops. So you've got Dire Straits in there, you've got <laughs> ABBA... Um, oh, hold on, I did make a note of them all here because I'm gonna, my memory's terrible. We've got, we've got yeah, um, Hold On, I'm Coming, yeah. um, ABBA, and the way you're conducting the weather, all that kind of thing. Was yeah. that in the script? Um, a few were in the script. Yeah. Um, some, I think some, I think the first draft, it was actually Dusty Springfield and the Pet Shop Boys. Really? Was, on your run. Love um, it. Oh. And I, in my head, it was perfect. And then it was like, that doesn't work. So, <laughs> but, um, but there was always a playlist and Money for Nothing was on that. And I kind of, I mean, I just love Dire Straits. I'm a huge fan. So, and we, and I was talking to the, we had these brilliant music supervisors, Danny and Ross. Um, and we made this playlist where like Zeus is kind of dad rock, you know, Zeus has a kind of UK gold maybe. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of like Credence and Dire Straits. <laughs> and, and so there was a playlist we made and I was like, we can't get Dire Straits. And they were like, oh no, no, we'll try. Um, so it was, I mean, I'm thrilled. Straight off the, straight in there with it. I mean, just yeah. straight in. How about that? And was it expensive? Were, were some of these the, uh, a question of- uh, Are you kidding? So Netflix, uh, you know, shelled out for quite yeah, a I, quite an investment music-wise, well, right? I think my initial well, thanks. my <laughs> suggestion is everyone went, oh my god, no, you can't have that. Paul Simon for the last twenty seconds. I was like, let's push for it, let's push for it. And um and then of course we had um Isabella Summers, who you met. Yes, I did the at the day. Chateau Marmont. Yeah, that's right. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah. she so she is the most incredible composer and such a nice human being. And so her task I think musically was we had this very disparate, not disparate, like, but a bit like, because I was so inspired by the Baz Luhrmann, Romeo and Juliet, and yeah. that soundtrack kind of, there's so much in it, yeah. but it works as a whole, so yeah. that was an inspiration. But Izzah's kind of task was to wrangle all of the needle drops into something cohesive with her score, which oh, I just really? think she did brilliantly. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm. She kind of, was there another person in charge besides you of the needle drops too, who suggested other things? No, they Direct, just took everything no, from- No, 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 the directors, of course, Georgie Ranuraro, who had fantastic ideas, and then and Paul Dingwall and Finn Oates, our editors. Oh. They, they would suggest things. Oh. Um, so lots of their choices are in. It was very collaborative, yeah. but we were all kind of making playlists and sharing them. So we we're all in the same World. Will there I ever be a soundtrack, may I ask, and where this is released? Uh, you, you I know? think there is a yeah. soundtrack on, there'll be oh. a Spotify soundtrack, and Izzy oh. is releasing it as a, as a a score. Yeah. And I have one other quick quick question. Those, those Shall trailers. I'll just go. No, 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 get it. No, because you, you're, you're, I, I, I. Th those trailers that, that, that were that were very well done, you know, I, I yep. thought the soundtracks on those there's some there's some songs that don't make it I think into the movie like uh, Tony Bennett if I rule the that world. Was, that was Netflix, so they they've listened to the playlist we Do made. Do you like that? Love love that. I've always I know that one. Uh, <laughs> love that, and um, and then the other one, bitter this bitter earth, mm. which I I love, and we've yeah. played that. So that's not in the movie. 
maybe season two. We can ah. only... But it's in the soundtrack, because yeah, it, yeah. it, it, I mean, in the trailer, great, great, great. So, sorry. No, but I, I heard there was a third musical element to, to this show. There was the score, there's the needle drops, and there's the live musical moments. Oh. In between takes, then you were. Oh, Jeff, I believe takes. you were very much. Well, I'm a pest. Yeah, I make <laughs> no, no, no. a pest of myself. You're not a pest. No, you're an entertainer. Someone would go. Do you think he'll play the Jurassic Park theme? Do you think that's going to happen? <laughs> and Jeff would know that that's what people wanted, and he'd play and play and play, and people would go, "Oh, it's not happening." And they drift away, and he just hears. Nah, nah. People run back in and go, "Oh my God, this is such a moment." <laughs> the mu- the mu- this yeah, I, I, I say you know I like to make music and and um. It's great. Y- you know, sing, but uh, the. The uh, playlist that I have in my mind right now, after the fact, and a lot of my research is done after the fact. In fact, I'm getting clearer about the whole show just talking about <laughs> it. That. It's kind of fun. Well, I like you know, it never ends for me, and who knows, we may do more. I hope you know, no, I, yeah. I, I hope so. So I'm still researching. I only went to Greece after the fact and <laughs> did, did a lot of things. But the play, the current playlist I have is, um, you make me feel so young. You make me feel like spring has sprung. There's that song. Uh-huh. How about if I, um. Uh, I got the world on a string, sitting on a rainbow. You that could be Zeus. Share this with me, and then we can. <laughs> can okay. we get the funding now? We can start yeah. putting a, a pop How, together for why the. Why doesn't budget? he sing the pitch it? for the second season? Maybe. Well, here it is. <laughs> How about Paul Simon? Still crazy after all these years. That's not bad. And then finally, I do. A, I kind of do, have it. Make a joke to myself with that song, you know, um, and change the lyrics. Um, why do birds suddenly appear every time I am near? Just like you, they long to be close to me. It's a kind of a, a vain person song. He's singing that in the mirror. Anyway, yeah. that's that, that's my right. current current yeah. pitch. I'm so thankful. yeah. Do you make playlists though ahead of going into to characters and roles? Does music help you prepare for it does. The roles? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, sometimes I'll write something down or go, hey, that's particularly this may be relevant or at least for me, uh, gets me going in this way uh, or or not. Most of it comes at the eleventh hour and on the spot where I go, oh, I know, I know, uh, and you know, and I'll start mm-hmm. singing something, you know, something will occur to me. Yeah. That that walk's definitely got some. It's got a song going on in your head with the walk. I love that. What's walk. what 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 is soundtrack in that walk? Well, I tell you, you know, when there wasn't sound being recorded, when I didn't have lines, I'd ask the director, Georgie Banks Davies, or writer of Mapfumo, hey, can I? Do you mind if I have my Bluetooth on this while we're filming mm-hmm. and actually play from my um, phone something that could help mm-hmm. me? You know, and I would, and I think during those uh, little shots. I had something on. I probably had Frank Sinatra live at the Sands, or the main event is another album I like. You know, something like that. Yeah. My re- my most recent approach, if anybody cares, is to get my friend who knows me and knows my system and knows what I'm working on, who's the leader of our band, Alex Frank, to kind of make a playlist, give it to somebody else, who then mans the Bluetooth and surprises me nice. with something else. Because that's the thing that most kind of gets yeah. me a little bit interested. I sometimes. love how much you like music. I love how much music is important to you. Uh, yeah, it is. And in, in, you know, both in terms of you can tell how much of a fan you are, but how much it's it's just in you, rhythms in you. You know, in terms of, yeah. do you find it hard sometimes navigating between being an actor and being a musician? Not hard. Or do they both complement each other? It's complementary, I think. You know. Yes, I could talk to you about it. I could you bore you about it, but yeah, I play. I have a band. And we play mm-hmm. jazz, and uh, and yes, it's as you know, it's a conversation. It's telling a story musically, and stories are informed by music, and it's you know um, overlapping and complementary. There was an amazing moment when Jeff did ADR. You know, you do the yeah, and and he would watch it, and then go, okay, I don't want to hear anything anymore, and he would have learnt the rhythm of what he needed to match. <laughs> And it would just be like, it was so musical. It was amazing. And, and that was, I've never seen that before. Mm. In the... I like, so I'll tell you, I want to tell her what, um, how, what it was like with you, because that was the mo- one of the most fun things. <laughs> Do I but, want to? but these days, <laughs> no, but these days, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but these days, uh, uh, jumping on what you said, the, um, they're so good technologically that you can, I prefer to, instead of ever going, well, I really have to match my lips, so I can do it again. And it really takes a little bit of the life. You can do it. I'm not bad at it. But if I can do it wild, as they say, and do, I think I get it. Let me do a new, what feels like a new version of that yeah, just yeah. to my ears. So, and then they can move it around. They're yeah. better at that now 
No, I was going to say that working with you, um, Charlie is so brilliant and creative and fun to have done this with, but never more as when we got a chance to do it together, sometimes Zoom, and then finally mm -hmm. in London together, when Charlie was saying, I had, I had, you know, some idea, and we'd, we'd yeah, yeah. collaborate, and we'd come up with something, try things, you know, you're not waiting for the sun, it doesn't cost much, <laughs> and you can try things. That was creative and as much yeah. fun as I had on the thing. I loved it. Was that a part of, of creating the character then specifically so that Jeff could bring it to life, you know, kind of having that opportunity to kind of really play with... with we, we just collaborated a lot, and so... Amazing. And he was immensely respectful mm -hmm. always about the script, but then would say, could I try this? And have you thought about this? And of course, you're like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So I was watch we watched episode one again last night, and um, so many of my favourite lines are not mine. <laughs> Jeff's, like, you know, it, it, the, the improvisation's great. So I think um, it was just a lot of fun because it felt like a, yeah, a true collaboration. It was great. It's the way you're able to um, almost kind of keep that, the, the, the evil nature of, of some of his choices under surface level. Like I'm thinking about the, the variation on clay pigeon shooting oh, yeah. as an example, <laughs> you know, in terms of the kind of, yeah, yeah. the sort of nonchalantness of kind of like pull kind of thing. Yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. Do you love that kind of, that playground of, of kind of texture to where he is, good, evil, all that kind of thing. Yeah, well, Charlie wrote it. That's that's what uh, Charlie wrote, a, a profound but multi-dimensional showcase for somebody who could, <laughs> you know, who'd want to try doing light and dark and, you know, you know sharp turns yeah. the, in between everything. And, uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun. And then when also within these characters in the script, you've got Orpheus, who's, who's you know, kind yeah. of a bit like the gods non-ginger Ed Sheeran, uh, in a way. And non what, non what? Ginger. Non-ginger Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got that kind of, you know, that, that, yeah, that he's, sort of singer-songwriter yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. kind of element to it and stuff. That must have been a, a, a fun element to, to write. You know, there's, got, there's original songs in that, yeah. or how did you... Yeah. Well, that was a dream because I got to work with Dan Smith from Bastille. Amazing! He, he is, and he's the nicest man, apart from you, but he is a wonderful um, human being, and so... He, we said, we need the song kind of quickly. <laughs> and he wrote it in about two hours in his kitchen and was like, is this okay? And we were like, this is incredible. <laughs> and, um, and so, and then we changed some of the lyrics to make it a little bit more of the show mm -hmm. and, you know, get things like Asphodel and the River Leith in and things. But he, um, he was another brilliant collaborator, uh, worked so quickly, identified the kind of music we needed. And Killian is just fantastic. I think he plays Orpheus so well because he had to be kind of a dick, but a dick that you go, I see why people like him, but yeah, oh my yeah. God. Like, and so I think he plays that so well, because yeah. you know, and people were like, oh my God, I want Orpheus to be my boyfriend. I'm like, really, do you? <laughs> but you know, that's their choice. But um, uh, it's not really my wheelhouse, but I think, um, yeah, he's fantastic. And working with Dan was great. And they recorded the track at Abbey Road, I think, oh, together. Wow. And, yeah, I think it was. No, yeah. well, that's amazing. Yeah. Do you remember that we, they went to Abbey Road to do the recording of the Orpheus song? I didn't know anything about yeah. it. No, wow. I didn't they, know about Dan happened. Smith. I didn't know. Yeah, amazing. You've been to Abbey Road. And... Have I've you, walked, Jeff? I've, I've walked past it. I didn't get to go. What? Oh, no, no, I think I was. I think we were filming. It oh, wasn't okay. like NFI. I think, okay. <laughs> I, think I, I think I wasn't. That we were doing something else. You must have been into Abbey Road. Didn't yeah. You? you recorded there? I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't think I did. I recorded in, you know... Columbia Records and Hollywood and stuff have been interesting places, but I don't. I went in. I believe somebody showed me around, and I think that's all I did there. Yeah. The, I mean, the casting on the show as well is 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 extraordinary, and I just love um, the choice of uh, Stephen Delane as Prometheus, and his uh, his his narration is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's just perfect, pitch perfect. He's really wonderful yeah and he's so good because I think he has to switch registers mm. from that narratorial kind of you know the almost the Greek the idea was a kind of Greek chorusy he was yeah. our way in but then he you know the way he switches in the scenes I mean that scene with you in episode one in the garden uh, when you first you know ping him off the cliff mm. and that conversation mm. between you I think is great yeah he's wonderful yeah he's fantastic isn't he and how, how about can you say because y you know, as you, as we know, it started, the gestation of this started a, a, a while ago in a mm. seedling idea. Yeah. And then even once we started, it kept, thanks to your creative flexibility and brilliance, <laughs> kept finding itself. Yeah. You know, and with Stephen's part, that kind mm. of 
you know, rose, didn't it? We, yeah, you're right. We did lots of additional photography because we realized when we had, A, the relationship between Prometheus and Zeus was, there was just less of it in the original um, script. Yeah. And I think we didn't realize till we saw it how much it was, A, brilliant, and B, vital, and really anchored the audience. This mm -hmm. relationship kind of became the spine of the show, and it was so useful to hang everything else off this. Because yeah. Prometheus was kind of in charge of the humans, and that antagonism and that age-old pain that Prometheus has because of what Zeus has done to him. Yeah. Um, so we did lots more shooting with these with those two, mm. and then, and also because the voiceover is great, you can keep working out, do we need a bit of exposition? Do we need the emotional? Yeah. Should we dial that up? And with voiceover, because I, and I did that on End of the Fucking World. I mean, there are episodes of that where there was so much more voiceover than there was meant to be. Because we're like, I think we can, you know. Uh, so so I, that's a, a technique I, 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 either I'm lazy or, you know, it's no, fun. It works. Works. No, so, it's a yeah. very creative, talented thing to do, I think, an exciting thing. And you get the opportunity to kind of have this these great um, scenes with so many different actors and mm. so many of the other characters mm. and it's kind of really interesting to see Zeus's kind of uh, relationship development with with each of them and mm. um, I loved watch I love watching you Janet in particular and just that's that's kind of like was it as much fun off camera as it looks on camera because it just like did well, you know each other beforehand? Did you? I had never met her. I no. Went, I went into the to, to the. I'd seen her, I'd, you know, in Albert Nobbs and different things. Uh, and then I, on, we were in Ischia, and I was, as I've told, was swimming in the Mediterranean for the first time, and she appeared, and <laughs> we met each other and lolled around in the in the in the sea, the, sal the salty, the warm sea, and, uh, and and Dionysus was there, our son. So the three of us, the Bon Rizwan, we were lolling around uh, for a couple hours in, in the water getting pruny and uh, getting to know each other. It was really, really fun. Oh, no, no. Uh, she is uh, the queen of uh, the acting world and she of artistry amazing. and of humanity. She's just a wonderful person to know and perfectly cast in this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, boy, oh boy, many, so many dimensions of that relationship uh, mm -hmm. were under the surface yeah. to be informed by backstory. We've been married, we're brother and sister. We've been, if you're really gonna do what I think you wanted to do, which is make these fables, fantastical stories, organic and naturalistic and real, then an actor's delightful uh, task was to go, geez, so we, we're brother and sister, how did that start? And then we how'd we get married? And and then what's this two thousand years been like? Yeah. What old things inform you know, yeah. all of that was, you know, uh, you know, it was a sky's the limit. We fell short, I did on you know, in every way, but it's a delicious thing so to fun. try to try to do. And Janet, oh boy. Uh, just being with her was not only delightful in, off screen, but in every kind of different scene, uh uh, nourishing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm Sorry. glad you mentioned sort of season two and th th at least that lets us know there's a want for it from your side of yeah, things yeah. which is really really great because um, this is just it was just so joyous to to watch and kind of be entertained by. And, oh, well, yeah, thank it's you so amazing. much. Um, just before we go I, I have to mention Wicked because mm. it's got music connected. Yes it does Stephen Are, Schwartz. Please tell me you're singing. Tell, tell me what? Tell me you're singing. I'm singing. Oh yes, I am singing. Well, you saw the play on stage. I didn't. I've never seen the play on stage, but I plan to before the film, before November. So I will. Are you? Because it's still playing all yeah, over it's the in world, London. but in yeah, London. Yeah. I saw yeah. the production in London just before I started a year or so ago. Yeah. They were wonderful. I cried throughout the whole thing because my kids were there and Emily was there. Yeah. I saw it through their eyes because I'd seen it originally. Mm -hmm. it, it was very moving then. Yeah, I, you know, he, yeah, The Wizard of Oz has a couple of songs and I, I sing with <sighs> Cynthia Revo and Ariana Grande. Wow. You're the Wizard of Oz. Huh? That's amazing. Yeah. You're the actual Wizard of Oz. I am. You are the. W you're the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Not really. You're the Wizard of Oz in Wicked. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, that's true. I yeah. well, I, that's that. That'll be the billing. Yes. Yeah. And my last question: Are you? I don't think you've done a full musical, have you? Where you are the lead in a musical, have you? A le the lead in a musical? <laughs> no, no. My first job was Two Gentlemen of Verona, Galt McDermott wrote music, but I was in the chorus. You I have understood. to. Yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Um, Charlie, can you write in one, please? I would love to, I'd love to, yeah. Really? I'm not very musical, so I don't know how... We well, you to, clearly we are. get some people in to help, to do the heavy lifting. I'm available. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested and I'll, available. I'll, I'll watch it all. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank so you good so to much. chat. Thank, thank you. Thank you.